Okay, so I had a couple of comments on one of my recent videos. Uh, so from Nathan Miller, Lee, Android 11, give it a try. And also Chico DIY gave me a link. Uh, and so I clicked on the link and you can see there's a post by Review Geek. And uh, if we scroll down, there is a link to the XDA forum post. There we go, most of the information is on that. One of the things I was also interested in was uh, the fact that it says USB boot is possible uh, just by changing the config text. Uh, so previously Android versions haven't worked from USB properly just to do with their file system. Uh, I don't think, I'm pretty sure I haven't done a video on it, I've done so many videos but I'm pretty sure I haven't done a video of Android running from USB. So uh, let's follow it through and see what we can find. So we click on the download link here. There's a couple of different versions that come up and I tried the weekly version but I couldn't get the App Store to load up. It just kept saying it couldn't make a connection. So I'm going to try the Micro G version which I think is the one that ETA Prime did in his. So this is the most recent one. 28th of October. 617 megabytes. So let's download that. And then I'll put that on my Kingdian 120 gig drive with my CSL USB to SATA adapter and see how well it runs. Okay, so that's downloaded. Uh, I managed to start two downloads at the same time, but this is the one that I didn't cancel, show in folder. Uh, so I don't know if I need to uh, unzip that or not. So it's in HomePie downloads. So let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager. There it is. Choose OS, use a custom OS, uh, it's in downloads already, so it's picked that up, so it looks like it doesn't need to be unzipped or anything like that. Choose my storage, so I'm running my OS on a 32 gig SD card, and I'm writing it to 120 gig SSD, uh, which is the one I showed in the picture just now. So let's hit write, and yes, and pop in our password. And you can see it copies pretty quick over to an SSD drive. Okay, so that's all done. So let's hit continue. Uh, now what we want to do is just check with Gparted that uh, we don't need to expand the partition. I don't think I did. I've already put this operating system on uh, an SD card uh, in my first test. Okay, so here is the SSD. And yes, yeah, so it's unallocated. So the main partition, which will be this one, uh, will need to be extended. So let's do that. So now we have all the available space. Hit tick. I've got a separate video about expanding partitions on other operating systems if, you want, if you're interested in it. There you go, so that was done. All operations successfully completed. So now we need to look at that guide and see what the other bit was that we needed to do. Now from the readme file in here, this bit was the one that had about USB booting. So switching between booting from SD card and USB is done in config.txt by enabling the needed overlay, SD card is default. So the one we need is dt overlay equals rpi dash android, right. So that could already be there but just hashed out, let's have a look. So let's have a look at the drives. I guess it's the boot one. Uh, so this one here is the one that I'm going to need to change. So let's have a look for that line. So it was DT overlay and it had USB boot. Oh, there you go, that booting from SD card, booting from USB. So it looks like you just have to do that one. Let's just check that was the same line. I copied it so I can paste it in. Yeah, that's definitely the line that I need. So let's do file and save. Okay, so now we should be ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is shut down and then take out my SD card that this operating system is running on and reboot with the SSD drive and see what happens. Okay, well it looks like it's booting fine. So if I drag up from the bottom, I can get all the apps and I've got the Aurora store. So let's click on that, welcome. Uh, so there's various different updates and things here. Fix Google login issues, permissions, allow. Oh look, we can go in and using Aurora Store with your own Google account may cause your account to be blacklisted or deactivated. Let's go anonymous then. Oh, okay, so we have what looks like a Play Store. Okay, so I've downloaded a few apps from the Aurora Store 
Uh, a lot of them haven't worked for me and um, some of them are just sort of quit out quite early. So it'd probably be better if I could get G apps on here. Uh, but I did read in the comments that it looks like people have struggled with that. So I'll have a look into that anyway. Uh, now, so I've got PPSSPP and I've got 4x4 Mania. Let's do PPSSP first. Now I haven't got any ROMs in here yet. And I always find PPSSPP quite difficult to navigate for finding ROMs. I love the program. Uh, so let's look for a folder. Right, so I'm going to put my ROMs in, in uh, the download folder because that comes up on that first page. So let's put a USB stick in with some ROMs on. So pop that in. If I now go into the file manager, so files, uh, there's my USB stick. So you double, double click, uh, double click. And then PSP minis, I've got one game in here. So if I do select all and then unselect the ones I don't want, right click and copy. So let's paste that in there. So let's get uh, GTA from that same place as well. So ROMs, PSP, Grand Theft Auto, right, so right click, ah, there we go. So just right click, copy, into downloads, right click and paste that in. It's a bit bigger, that one. Not so great that you get no idea of how how much is copied over or anything. So I don't know how long to leave that. Okay, well, I'm gonna try the 4x4 jam anyway. So that'll probably just copy over in the background. So PSP. Okay, so I've been playing around with the settings um, because it was running pretty bad before. And uh, here's the settings I'm using. So uh, I'll just go down through them and you can see if there's anything that you need to change on yours to make it run better. Right, so let's go into this 4x4 game, which actually runs pretty well now. Although it's quite difficult, uh, like the uh, original Insane, uh, which was this game before. Oh, where's my gate? Straight ahead. I'm trying to cut him off. Oh. This is mine. Oh, I'll slow down a bit then. But this, what I like about this is it's nice physics in this game. Oh, <laughs> I thought that I just crashed through a tree. Um, and it does you really get like after this there's going to be quite quite the bump that you've got to go over there we go and you can pick whatever route you want obviously try and do the shortest route which uh, I didn't well probably probably overly tried the shortest route I'm gonna catch him now am I so where's the next one that way oh but I'm going in the right direction for this one so as you can see, that runs on these settings, actually runs pretty well. I'm happy with that. Whoa, and I rolled it. Uh, if I quit out of that, just by pressing escape, and uh, go to main menu, and let's do a little bit of GTA. I've actually done a save state, so we can load and pick up where I got to. Here we go. Now this doesn't run quite as well, and there are better versions of this, uh, Raspberry Pi OS and also RetroPi runs this better. Uh, there may be some more settings that I've missed that, that could speed this up, but yeah, you can see it's a bit laggy. It's kind of playable, but it's not, not as enjoyable when it runs like this. There you go. So let's try, uh, I think I'll quit out of the game. I don't know if it makes too much difference nowadays with Android, whether you quit out of the game or not. Uh, and I've got this four-wheel drive. I guess it doesn't because that four-wheel drive game was in the background. But let's start it uh, afresh. And I've, uh, I mentioned in Pi News that I didn't think that um, Real Racing 3 was running that well uh, in ETA's video compared to the video I did with Consta Kangs. But uh, someone else has given me a message and said that they've been playing it for a couple of hours and it's been running absolutely fine. So maybe it's just something to do with the screen capture that, that makes it look a bit more choppy. I've tried several games and they haven't run that well on this and loading times can be quite slow. 
but uh, I don't know if it's because it's not using the Google Store, so I really need to have a look at how to get the Google Store on here. Although I did read that it isn't supported on Android 11 to have G apps, uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to be done. Yeah, this looks like it's crashed, but I think it comes through this. And this actually looks like quite a decent game. Similar theme to the other game, uh, sort of four-wheel drive off-roading. But, uh, but this is an Android game, whereas the other one was a PSP game. Here we go, tap to start. I quite like the look of this game. I might, I might try it on, I've got a Pixel 3a, I could try it on that. I've got an Nvidia Shield TV, that's probably the best one to try it on uh, to see how well this runs. Right. And we're off. And if I press select on my Xbox 360 controller, I can flick through different... I mean, this screen mode is horrific. Seems a bit a bit too low, doesn't it? Uh, but this one's all right. I mean, this is definitely isn't as fast as it should be. Um, but I was quite pleased to see it running. Oh. Oh, you get stuck in the stuck in the water, and it goes all over the screen. <laughs> okay, so for now, let's call that it for games. Can I quit out? Function and back on my keyboard. That quits me out. So I managed to install the Edge browser. I tried the Chromium one, and I couldn't get that to work. Uh, again, this is using that Aurora store. Um, but uh, the Edge browser worked all right, actually, and uh, I thought the YouTube performance was fine at 480. Um, it, did, it did mention in the description that uh, video hardware acceleration isn't there, um, but uh, I think it was almost, maybe it was all right at 720 as well. Uh, certainly 480 looked all right, windowed. So let's try, and let's go for this one, and let's go in a bit where we get some screen capture so my screen capture stopped just now um, and it was because the screen goes black and I do get that with the edge browser didn't have it with the games at all there you go so what resolution are we running at now this is running at probably 480 yeah 480 so let's go up to 720 let's click back on there that's not bad little, well, a little bit laggy there uh, and full screen gets worse, obviously. Um, but the browser itself, so if I do Hot UK Deals, I thought it felt quite responsive, actually. Because some of the early versions of Android on Raspberry Pi really were poor. Uh, the latest Consta Kang version, Android 10, is, is brilliant. My screen capture cut out again. Uh, so scrolling is, is okay. Um, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, I think I just need to do more testing on this, but it's really nice to see someone else working on Android uh, on Raspberry Pi. Uh, any other operating system or any version of operating system is always appreciated by me. Uh, and all the menus and everything work really quite nicely. Uh, if I drag up from the bottom, uh, things like uh, the settings mode on there. All of that seems pretty logical. You can see there's various different tweaks you can do to wallpaper and stuff like that about tablet Raspberry Pi. So yeah, I'm impressed. I will play around with it more. Let me know what you think and what games you've had running well on this system in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.